Tiger sharks and crocodiles have been in the news lately, and that's because they're attacking people. And I was one of the victims. In the tropical northern half of Australia, the tiger reigns king of the ocean predators and the crocodile king of the rivers. Between these two, there have been 82 attacks and 24 fatalities over the past 20 years. So which one is the worst killer, the tiger shark or the crocodile? In this film, we're going to find that out. Shark and croc attacks have always captured people's imagination. It's the horrible thought of being eaten alive. I often go out to Bat Reef off Port Douglas to film tiger sharks, and this day began no different to the rest. My procedure is to follow the tiger in the dinghy and dip my pole camera in when close. It's safer this way, or so I believe. Just like people, animals can have their good days and their bad days. We're too close. The tiger turns, bumps and attacks. This is the last shot before my camera is put out of action. Luckily, John Harding snapped some stills of what's happening. The first of the three Australians lucky to be alive after their inflatable boat was ripped apart by five man-eating sharks. And remarkably, their chilling escape from the huge tiger sharks was all captured on film. And here is their exclusive story. The scariest day of my life. It was bad. I mean, the shark really wanted to tear that thing apart. It was angry. Filmmaker Ben Crop is used to dicing with danger, but when a three-metre tiger shark attacked his dinghy, even Ben thought his luck may have run out. Once the tiger makes up his mind to bite, he doesn't stop. You know, he like, becomes like a feeding machine, and even though it's a tasteless dinghy, he still wouldn't stop. The shark was just going crazy. I, you know, it was like it was had a big another shark or fish or something in its mouth. It just wouldn't let go. Trina Fleischman was in the dinghy with Ben when the shark pounced. I froze. It was just, I just froze. With like one of those nightmares you have where you just freeze and you just can't move. That day, Ben hoped to film tiger sharks on a reef off far north Queensland when he got more than he bargained for. We saw 15 tiger sharks, all between about oh, three to four metres. And one of them started following the dinghy, actually plodding along behind the dinghy. We thought, oh, this guy looks friendly, we'll film him. So we started following him in the dinghy, got quite close, and uh, uh, very close, and then suddenly the, the tiger turned and bumped the dinghy. Whether he charged or bumped, I don't know. I know the first thought I had was, this shouldn't be happening. This should not be happening. John Harding was steering the boat, trying to get Ben as close as possible for a good shot. Then I lost sight of the shark. It's gone under the out of sight part in front of the boat, behind, in front of Ben. And what the darn stupid thing did then, it decided to change direction and go under the boat. And that's where it charged, whether it was attacking us or whether it was trying to get away, I don't know. But I stopped the motor. And I thought, where is it? And then all of a sudden, that's when I saw this head come out of the water on my left between Trina and I. I just knew I had to keep my balance, so I just turned my head slowly. And as soon as I turned around, all I could see was this big, huge face. And that's when I screamed. Well, this is where the shark bit. 
And Trina was sitting right here where my hand is. The dog was sitting here peering over. I'm up there, John's at the back steering. And I mean, he, he took many, many bites and then just started to roll and tear a metre long stretch here. Not, ju not just this outer skin, but, but deflated the inner skin as well. You know, put a lot of teeth marks in there all the way through. And you can imagine that this boat just slowly deflated down. For five terrifying minutes, the 10-foot shark wouldn't let go. One side of the dinghy deflated. Luckily, they could see a boat of local fishermen in the distance. And I thought, but they were our only hope. Really, that's how I felt. So we all yelled. And yeah, they came over. The shark's still hanging onto the boat. So imagine what they saw. And they knew it was Ben, because we'd spoken to them earlier. One of them had said, are you Ben Crop? And uh, so here they are, they motor over, and here's Ben Crop's boat with a 10-foot shark hanging on it. <laughs> John, were there moments there when you thought you'd end up in the water and you would become shark bait? Yes, but because it was a very calm day, and uh, I think that was what was in our fact, uh, our saviour. If there had been any sort of chop, uh, the slop coming aboard the boat would have filled it up and we would have been in the water with this thing. And a cranky shark like that, no. <laughs> That's what I was worried about. I didn't want to be in the water with this thing. As terrifying as this experience was, it won't stop any of this crew getting close to sharks again. No, I'll be back, but uh, I'll be more cautious, <laughs> much more cautious. Do you ever worry that uh, your nine lives might be up next time? No, I, I've, I've been doing this for over 20 years and, and that's probably the worst mishap I've had with a tiger. And so I guess another 20 years before the next one happens. <laughs> Thomas and Eileen Lonigan created world headlines in 1998 when they were miscounted as being on board a dive boat and left behind. Their disappearance created endless rumours that a hungry press took up. The Lonigans were never seen again, their fate most likely in the jaws of a tiger shark. Thomas and Eileen Lonigan were on a round-the-world holiday after serving three years in the Pacific with the American Peace Corps. School has first grade through eighth grade. Teachers, Thomas taught science, Eileen maths. Right now it's November. We're, we'll be leaving this week, so right now our house is mostly empty. They were experienced divers, but how do you train for being left 30 miles from shore? Speculation about what really happened to Americans Tom and Eileen Lonigan runs from claims of double suicide to allegations that they faked their own death. Tracy Bowden travelled to the little town of Port Douglas, north of Cairns. It's one of the most idyllic spots in the world. It's 8.30 Sunday, January the 25th. American tourists Tom and Eileen Lonigan leave Port Douglas on board the Outer Edge bound for St Crispin Reef. 9.50, the Lonigans begin the first of three dives for the day. At 2.20, the Americans set off alone for their final 40-minute dive. They asked specifically not to dive with the dive master, so they were diving on their own. 3.20, the Outer Edge heads for home. On board, the Lonigans dive bags, but not the Lonigans. The search begins 64 hours after the couple started their final dive. By now, the town of Port Douglas is abuzz with rumours and accusations about what really happened. I would say 99% yes, the sharks eventually got them, probably a big tiger shark. Filmmaker and underwater veteran Ben Crop has no doubt what became of Tom and Eileen Lonigan and who's to blame. Obviously they were left behind. Can you imagine the despair that they went through? And then it gets worse because after that dehydration sets in, exhaustion sets in, and then the sharks. Those people will have died a horrible death. Then there's the faked disappearance theory. For starters, there's this two-storey pontoon on the reef, visible from where the Lonigans were diving. Was a boat waiting there to whisk them away? Next, 
lost the Lonigans' equipment. Eleven days after their disappearance, Tom Lonigan's diving vest is washed up 100 kilometres north of St Crispin Reef, unbuckled and undamaged. Three days later, one of Eileen's fins is found. The next day, her vest. Two days later, a hood. Finally, their tanks are washed ashore. Six pieces of diving gear have travelled all that way and ended up in the same area. I think they're back on land. Diving industry representative Graham Connett prefers to think it was all a setup by the Lonigans. So you think they are alive? I think it's a good possibility. I feel that some of these rumours are, are brought out to try and put the blame back on, on the, the victims and take it away from the people who actually caused the problem. It's a mystery. And right at this stage, nobody knows the answer. And until we find these Lonigans, then we won't have any answers. No, there's no mystery. It's cut and dried. They were left behind and they died because of that. This is all that's left of the 368 kilogram shark caught north of Sydney yesterday. Bob Van Lewick skippers, the grumpy one. He and his crew were 50 kilometres out to sea when they hooked the big tiger shark. Curiosity got the cat and we slit the gut open to see what was inside it. And we pulled out a big chunk of whale bone first and then some bits and pieces. Including a human skull, pelvic bone and parts of a left arm. Crocodiles are in the news too. The most recent attack at Bathurst Bay was really terrifying and great acts of bravery. Now I was there three weeks before the attack on that same beach and saw that same crocodile hanging around the campsite. The first thing Andrew yelled out was grab the baby. So I picked up the whole bassinet and then um, from what I could see, the crocodile started to take Andrew out of the, drag him out of the tent. She thought the croc had the baby, so she grabbed, she jumped on top of the croc, and the, and the croc uh, actually bit, uh, bit right into her right arm. I thought she was okay, but then later on found out that she, um, yeah, her arm was pretty torn up. I don't think I've ever heard of a braver act in my life. A Royal Flying Doctor flight brought the pair to Cairns this morning. They'd already received first aid treatment at a ranger station 60 kilometres from the attack site. One had been collected in a mustering uh, chopper that had gone and collected him and um, the lady had been brought down by road. The most obvious injuries were covered by dressings applied at the first aid post but the 4.2 metre croc had inflicted more serious damage. Mostly fractured limbs and um, they were pretty lucky basically. They were among eight members of a Brisbane family group staying at a campsite about 40 metres back from the beach at Bathurst Bay. The 34-year-old man was dragged from his tent where he was sleeping with his wife and a child by the giant crocodile just after 4am. The 60-year-old woman ran from a second tent and jumped on the croc's back. Wildlife officers were amazed by her courage. A very heroic action for somebody to actually put themselves in that sort of scenario. Um, a 4.2 metre crocodile is certainly a sizeable piece of machinery. The desperate struggle with the 350 kilogram reptile ended when it was shot dead by another camper armed with a rifle. The attack victims are in a serious but stable condition. Tom Hilston, 7 News. It's an attack that shouldn't have happened. A group of nine tourists on an outback adventure went swimming in a billabong in Kakadu National Park. It was around midnight and there was a full moon. A German tourist felt something brush past her. Moments later, her 25-year-old sister screamed and disappeared. It was only then a crocodile was seen in the water. Everyone got out and phoned for help, but it was too late. The woman's body couldn't be recovered until rangers harpooned the crocodile and chased off another keeping guard of the victim. Talisha Fegatilli got more than just sunburn when she went to the beach for a holiday. The eight-year-old, the victim of what authorities believe was a crocodile attack. It pulled me under and then it was like it was pushing off me instead of just scratched me. 
The Atherton girl lost a tooth, part of one finger and suffered bite and scratch marks on her arms and torso. Martina Harrington's wounds are beginning to heal, but the eight-year-old will never forget the day her dad saved her from the jaws of a crocodile. She went to me and bit me in the leg. It had started out as a turtle hunt for Roy and his children, residents of Timber Creek, south of Darwin. The kids following bubbles in the water they thought were from a turtle. And all of a sudden, I can hear see this little girl dive under. Just like something been bitten her. When the crocodile struck, it dragged the tiny girl under, releasing the eight-year-old when Roy grabbed its tail. When he felt that uh, someone out of his tail, so he just twisted it and cut it out. Time enough for the real-life crocodile Dundee to grab an axe as the saltwater croc charged him and his little girl. In real croc country, in places like the Prince Regent River at Australia's top end, you don't swim in the water. Ginger Meadows did, and she's dead. Her friends watched as she was taken by a three-metre saltwater crocodile while swimming between a raft and a luxury motor cruiser. The river is alive with these prehistoric reptiles, most big enough to take a human. In this remote area, 300 kilometres from the nearest big town, it's unlikely that Ginger's body will be found, although a seaplane with fisheries and fauna department investigators arrived to search today. Ginger Meadows was a part-time model from Virginia, USA. When her marriage broke up, she sought fun and adventure in Sydney, then on to Fremantle for the America's Cup. When that finished, she headed north, on the 33-metre luxury cruiser Lady G. My last words were to her, this is a very big country and the north is a very dangerous place. If you're not used to it and you don't understand Australia, be careful. And um, now she's uh, dead. Ginger was the seventh person taken by a crocodile in the past two years, a death toll that today led the federal government to consider fining tourists who encroach on these man-eaters. We will be investigating the possibility of introducing fines for peace people who place themselves at risk in area. At Carl's Crossing, there have been signs up for years. We have been desperately worried for a long time. But who's to blame, the crocodiles or the visitors? Uh, if they weren't there, they wouldn't be eaten. Both are certainly bad guys and a real threat if you're out swimming or fishing in the tropical north. So which is the worst, the tiger shark or the crocodile? To find this out, we're going to look at 10 of their characteristics and give each of them a score out of 10. This should bring them in. Right on him. There he is there. I want a tiger, but another shark comes to the bait first. A harmless tawny. I know the hypersensitive nose of a tiger will pick up the scent of the bait from a long way off. This is amazing. So shallow the water, and it's only a metre deep, and these big sharks, three metres long, are coming in to feed. The tiger is cunning and cautious. It circles the bait for a long time before making up its mind. He's got it. Nothing will stop the tiger after the first bite. It becomes a feeding machine. All the remora are following him, they want a piece. I've chosen the tiger shark because it's responsible for most attacks in the north, where the croc lives. Tigers are quite plentiful. I've had up to 10 of them feeding at the back of my boat. With good vision below and above the water, the croc can suss out its prey and stealthily move in. The victim will not realise the croc is there until the terrible lunge. For 
intelligence, the shark scores seven, the croc, 10. The only proven cure for fear is knowledge. Watch the tiger's ability to catch a turtle, its favorite diet. In a chase, the turtle is most vulnerable when surfacing to breathe. Those terrible teeth can even soar through the tough shell. A file snake is slow and easily caught by the croc. It swallowed whole. The croc is equally skillful in catching its prey on land. Stealth is the key. Both score a 10, an equal ability to catch their prey. Tigers are big sharks, supposedly grown to six meters. The largest I've seen was five meters, and it was huge. Crocs supposedly grow to eight meters, but over six meters is rare. See how its massive bulk out of the water is effectively reduced as it enters the water. The croc is the biggest and scores an eight to the tiger's six. The tiger is the slowest swimmer of the killer sharks. It's king, no need to hurry. Only when feeding does it break into a gallop. The croc needs to bask in the sun to store up energy. When it needs to move, it can do so very quickly. The croc reacts and swims faster. I give it a 10 to the shark's eight. Talk about jaws. The tiger shark has it all. Even in old age, it still has a full set of teeth. Behind that nasty front row are more rows of teeth. And they're lying down, ready to move forward when a front one is lost. The teeth are serrated and sharp. The curve acts like multiple sores. When the tiger bites, it shakes its head from side to side, and those teeth go to work, slicing a neat chunk out of the victim. Just horrible. Nothing in the animal world compares with this feeding machine. The crocodile has conical teeth, like your dog, but much larger. They're for holding their prey, not cutting like the tiger. 
They use three methods to crush their victim and turn it into a rag doll so that they can eat it. And those jaws, they come down with enormous pressure, 4,000 pounds per square inch. Now that's three times what the tiger can bite and 40 times what we can bite, even if you're a Hannibal Lecter. Then the clock rolls. It's called a death roll, for it kills and breaks the victim's bones. Finally, the croc slams the victim on the water surface. And now it's all jelly, a rag doll, easy to tear apart and swallow. So diabolically gruesome. The tiger shark wins jaws with a 10, and the crocodile, 8. If that's any consolation when it goes into a death roll. The more we know about a killer, the less frightening it becomes. But it's difficult to study the behaviour of tigers. We do know that a tiger has the highest known electrical sensitivity in the animal kingdom. Those electroreceptor pinholes in the head and lateral line canals pick up the slightest vibration some distance away. A moment before it bites, it protects the eye. I've seen a definite pecking order when feeding. The largest feeds first. Big stingrays are easy to catch. They're capable of short bursts of speed, but soon tire and slow down. The tiger is relentless. The ray's own electric organs can emit a burst of current that can jam the tiger's electroreceptors. But the tiger's other sensors override it this time. Dugong are a special treat, and the tiger its greatest fear. A third eyelid, called a nictitating membrane, slides over the eye on contact with the victim. The croc has an eyelid too, a clear membrane that gives it good vision underwater. Male crocs are loners and stake out their territory. Any intruding male is chased away. They're perfectly capable of catching birds roosting near the water. I saw this female blowing bubbles. I don't know why, but it did happen a few minutes before mating. The female makes the first move. She sidles up to the big male who slides his bulk on top of her. We can only imagine what is happening in the dirty water. They're twisting their bodies to couple. The female occasionally gasps for air throughout this rather lumberous copulation. She swallowed some water. The first storm heralds the onset of the wet season. It's a call for the female to build her nest. She lays about 50 eggs. When checking a nest for eggs, first make sure the female is not guarding it, for she can be very cranky. Hey, let me out here. Oh, we'll have to come back after and get that. 
After 90 days of incubation, Mother Croc hears the muffled squawking of her hatching babies and she opens the nest. The babies crack the outer shell with a special tooth on their snout. Once they leave the protective custody of the mother, they're at risk. Only a few survive to grow to an old age, unless shot by man. For most people, close encounters with crocodiles happen at a wildlife park, like Hartley's Crocodile Adventures north of Cairns, where visitors are educated and entertained. We have 24 crocodiles in here. They are all the same species, the estuarine crocodile. If you're trying to imagine what 8.6 metres would look like, it's 1.3 metres longer than this boat. Alright, let's see if we can get some of the time we have any trouble getting chicken heads when the colonel's got a special on nuggets. <laughs> come on! Swim out towards the boats if they're hungry. Yep, I can see you coming. Hurry yourself up. Come on! Come on! That's the girl. Come on, up you come. Good girl. Come on, hurry yourself up. Come on! Quite normal behaviour. They eat a lot of birds in the wild, particularly water birds. One way they capture them is birds are roosting on branches out over the water. They can drive themselves up like this. Grab the birds off the branch. You're not going to give it back, are you? Come on, give me back the pole. That's the boy. Straight out of the boat. Stay there, lady. Come on. Try and get them to jump up as high as we can possibly get them to jump to get that food. Come on, up you come. Look at this one. See, they have no fear of the boats. My two sons and I have had many wild encounters. Dean's dead all right. Half the head's off, Dean. A shark has killed the turtle. Almost certainly a tiger. Turtle is their favorite diet. We tow the turtle out for a sea burial. Tiger shark follows. We didn't see it before, but it's right here now behind our dinghy. I'm not one to let any filming opportunity pass by. Oh, I feel like crunching through the, crunching into it. I just hope they don't stick their teeth in our rubber ducky. There's three tigers now. They're all circling. Oh wow! Okay, 
was just coming straight up this way. Yeah, I think, the, must be for the white. I camera. think it's going to have a go at the camera. <laughs> Anyone fishing in the far north is bound to encounter crocodiles. Ah, looks like croc tracks. He's just laying against the bank here yeah. and then slid back into the water. He'd be in here somewhere. Caution is required, even when carried away by the excitement of hooking a barra. A barra. For dinner. Hey Nick, there was a rock over there and now it's gone. I know. Must be a big croc. Look in there, it's up again. Shoot. Yeah, he's coming this way, Adam. He's a real game croc, Nick. Isn't he? Just sitting there. Well, see, he thinks he's camouflaged. <laughs> Come on, you beauty! Come on! Whoa! Whoa, the size of Hey Dean, the croc's coming! Watch out! Look at him go! It's coming. Step back! Oh. I just hooked the end of my lure with my rod. No way that croc is getting my fish. <laughs> no. That is the hardest barra I've ever caught. Hey, Dean. <laughs> we enter a creek where 4,000 crocs were shot in three years. Now they're making a rapid comeback. Got it. He's really wrapped up in that mud. Yeah, they're um, prone to skin cancer, you know, so they cover themselves in the mud to stop them, you know, getting burned badly. I was at a crocodile farm and they had a crocodile there with a real severe case of cancer right across his back. <laughs> Familiarity breeds contempt. And we do become foolish in this croc encounter. Jackie is not impressed. This is eyes watching us. Dad? We're getting close. Some bike can disturb his peace. I think he's going to go rather mad soon. Don't get much closer than that. <laughs> Look, we're a bit close. We're a bit close for my liking. This one. Yeah. Really? We're too close. No closer. Truly? No, no, back off. Back off. Don't overdo it. <laughs> but he can swing around and come in the stingy. And you don't want to jump out in that water, do you? No, I'll sit on deck. Oh, it's better hold your side. The wind's pulling us around. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. He's moving again. The tree's broken. To which I was holding. <laughs> what do you think of that, Jackie? Closest Lovely. as ever you've been to a croc? <laughs> sure is. Hoss, what are you doing? Right, Hoss, 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 he's screwing himself up. <laughs> yeah. There, he's there again. He's there. Hoss, he's there. He's looking at us. He's looking straight at us. Oh, he went under. He's five of us against one of him. Where is he? He's smaller than one of us. He's up. He's up. Look at that stick. Forward, Hoss. Let's go again. Forward, Hoss. Well, we might as well go now, eh? <laughs> Please. He's hungry. Anyone talk to that? We're running along the foreshore near the river mouth and see a crocodile slide in. The water's clear enough to follow it. Ooh. He's not impressed with us at all. It's this is a wonderful opportunity to film the croc underwater, and so I lower my camera in. It's a safer way to film a croc, but difficult because of refraction. 
I have to guess the angle and hope I have the crock in frame. Don't go over, Dean. Okay, slow down. Yeah, it's coming up. Turn around. Yeah. It's stopped again. No, it's stopped again. I'm going to go in. Okay. It's going forward again. Now I can see what the camera is recording. The croc's releasing air bubbles as it rises to breathe. About two meters long and very quite not, not aggressive, I don't think at all. Why are those jaws open? I'm not too happy about this. I think he's warning me to back off. Thanks, Nick. There you go, you get oh, some good stuff. Look, beautiful, yeah. beautiful, yeah. And very tame, just the way he sits on the bottom. Yeah, right. And not aggressive. I, I, I don't think he'd have a go at you. Yeah, right. Really, really beautiful croc. Excellent. The same croc attacked a girl six years later. I'm cruising past Turtle Point, running alongside an algae slick, when fins slicing the surface catch my eye. It's a manta ray. They normally feed on plankton, but here they're following the algae slick. They're not bothered by my boat drifting close alongside. It is a crocodile, and a big one too, coming in to check out all the commotion. He's more interesting, so I swim the boat to meet him. Just sitting there. We turn back toward the island, Nick. See if I can get up ahead. It really looks beautiful. I mean, this is when the crocodile really looks his best. Nice and clean. You can see every little detail of his legs splayed out. And he almost looks harmless because the boat, you know, we're much, much bigger than him and he's a little bit scared of us. But if I jumped in the water, things would change. I think it would come straight for me. Fishermen say that where there's crocodiles, there will be barra. So we follow the croc in shore, anticipating some good fishing. Without lots of crocs, the barra population would be low, for the croc feeds on catfish that eat the spawn of the barra. There he is. Oh, he's heavy. I can't lift him up. Not with a little trace. Here we go. Oh, how is that? Now that is a barra. Oh, look at the sharkies. Oh, they're everywhere. Oh, you start setting. <laughs> Boy, that was a big shark. Yeah, he took the lure, everything. Oh. There's another shark following him. Okay. I mean, he's got the cod. In the wild north, it's certain you will encounter lots of crocs, barra, small sharks, 
and the occasional big tiger. Now we're going to look at how many recorded attacks there have been in the last 20 years. We may not understand why a shark attacks, but for them, it's pure instinct. There have been 22 tiger attacks over the last 20 years. And then suddenly the, the tiger turned and bumped the dinghy. I just knew I had to keep my balance, so I just turned my head slowly. And as soon as I turned around, all I could see was this big, huge face. And that's when I screamed. The shark was just going crazy. Croc attacks in the last 20 years. The new mine hunter HMAS Huon had picked up two sea kayakers after their companion was mauled by a four metre crocodile. The attack took place on this sand cay in Shelburne Bay, 80 nautical miles southeast of Thursday Island. The kayakers were travelling from Cairns to Thursday Island at a time of year when crocs rarely attack. Apparently, he was standing knee deep in water. Um, just uh, having a bit of a, a bit of a splash his face and that after after the ride after the uh, paddle, and uh, the croc had snuck up behind him. The shark scores a four, the croc ten in the most attacks over the last twenty years. There is nothing more gruesome than a creature eating its own kind. Humans are sometimes bait too, and in those 22 tiger attacks, eight were fatal. Crocodile attacks are much more numerous, 60 in 20 years, and the fatalities are higher too. 16 have died. Ashley McGough and Sean Blowers know they're lucky to be alive. I went past the croc, I didn't see it. Ashley screamed out, croc, croc, and looking around, just swam to the nearest tree and straight up we went. Late Sunday afternoon, the pair dived into the Finnis River, 80 kilometres southwest of Darwin, to rescue their friend, Brett Mann. He was washing off mud after a fun day of quad biking when he slipped into the water. But it was too late. His mates were forced to watch helplessly as the 22-year-old was snatched. Two minutes later, the croc brought Brett to the surface and like, pretty much showed him off to us and then off he swam. And um, then five minutes later, he was back. For the next 22 hours, the huge reptile stalked them. He'd come down around the back of the tree and we just sat there watching us for a while. And then he went under, went around the other side of the tree, come up, he just made sure we could see him. Just, yeah, being cheeky. Sean and Ashley, both 19, struggled to stay awake during a terrifying rainy night. Help finally came the next morning as the hunt began for the crocodile. His tragic death now just sinking in. 16 horrible deaths score the croc a 10 and five for the tiger with eight fatalities. <laughs> It's unlikely a scuba diver will meet a tiger, and even more unlikely will it attack. It's people like me who are more prone to an attack because I'm purposely attracting them. I've filmed many tigers in close encounters over 40 years with only one real attack. People fishing and camping in the far north will see crocodiles. It's important to never repeat your activities in the same place over a few days. A croc may watch you on the first day, come closer on the second, and make up its mind on the third. If you're foolish in allowing a close encounter, there's a 50% chance the croc will attack. Thank you.
The tiger barely rates a one in the likelihood of an attack. Let a croc get close to you and your chances are not so good. Recorded attacks over the last 20 years have shown that eight out of 22 tiger attacks were fatal. Now that means you have a 30% chance of dying in an attack. It appears that when a tiger bites, those terrible teeth cause such a massive injury, it's likely you will bleed to death. With crocodiles, 16 victims died in 60 attacks over the past 20 years. Now that's a 25% chance of dying if you are attacked. If grabbed in the water, it's almost certain to be fatal. It seems if you're attacked on land, you do have a fighting chance, as was proved in the recent attack at Bathurst Bay. In a score out of 10, it's 10 for the tiger and eight for the croc. Let's look at the final score. Which is our worst killer, the shark or the croc? The tiger shark scores 63 points and the croc 89 points. Well, the crocodile wins by a large margin and I'm not surprised. Personally, if I had the choice of meeting a tiger shark or a crocodile in the water, I'd choose the tiger shark any day. I feel that I'd survive. But with a crocodile, I'd be saying my prayers.